Here I have an event model. You can think of it as being something like a birthday, wedding anniversary, things like that. The event has a date attribute and we need to use this date to determine when is the next anniversary, the next date we celebrate the event. So let's add a new accessor. We'll do public function get next anniversary attribute and then here we'll create a new date and set it to this date. Now if we were to look at an axis representing time, today we are here, 8th of March 2022. If we are to get the next anniversary for a date, let's say 1st of June 1991, what we'd need to do is bring this date to the present year. Here's how we can do that. We'll do date, set year, and to grab the current year, we can do now of year. And let's just return the date for now. Inside my test, I'll create a new event. And I'll set the date to 1st of June 1991. Let's also import the event model class. And for now, let's just die and dump the event next anniversary date. And let's convert that to a date time string. If we run this test, we'll see we get the expected result. The next anniversary is 1st of June 2022, which is this year. Now, since the next anniversary is a carbon date, we can get the remaining time in different formats. We can do diff in days, and this will give us the remaining time in days, which is 84. We can do diff in months, years, and so on. But what I want to get is a nicely readable format, and we can get that with diff for humans. Let's rerun the test, and here it is. We get two months from now, which is nicer. But there's a problem with our implementation, and I'm sure some of you already noticed it. If we set the event date to a date that when normalized, when we set its year to the current one, it's still in the past, so something like 1st of March 1991, when we run the test, we get an unexpected result. We get one week ago, whereas we expect it to say something like 11 months from now, a date that is in the future. What we need to do is, after we set the current year, if the date is still in the past, we add another year to it. So if date is past, date add year. Let's rerun the test, and here we go. We now get 11 months from now, which is the expected result. Let's complete the test by adding the necessary assertions. We'll rename the event to event A, and then we'll do this, assert true, event A, next anniversary, is, and here we can pass a string format of the date, 1st of March 2023. And then let's add another event B for the other type of date. And this one will be 1st of June 1991, and the expected next anniversary should be on 2022. Let's rerun the test. And it fails because this one is false. Oh, it should be 1st of June. Rerun, and here it is. One thing to keep in mind when testing dates is that it's a good idea to control whatever date is used as the current date. Otherwise, at some point in the future, your test will break. To set the current date, we can use carbon, set test now, and pass it the date. In our case, this should be 8th of March 2022. Before we end this video, let me quickly show you how we can define accessors and mutators using the new Laravel 9 syntax. My favorite part of this is that we can remove the prefix and also the suffix, so we can remove attribute. This will return an attribute, which is this one right here from Illuminate Database Eloquent Quests. And then here we'll have to return attribute make. And this function takes as the first argument a callback representing the accessor, while the second argument, if present, will be the mutator. 
In our case, we only have an accessor, so I'll add the function, copy all this, and paste it in. We can also make use of PHP 8 named arguments to make it clear that this is the accessor. Let's rerun the test, and it still passes. And that's it. That's how you can calculate the next anniversary date in Laravel. Well, mostly carbon. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.